On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Would you hold your bread up before the Lord with me? Father, we thank you for this bread that represents your body. We know that it was bruised and beaten on our behalf. And we know that it purchased our healing and health on this earth. Lord, we pray this morning that your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. As we partake of this bread, we pray, God, that our bodies would be healthy and whole. In Jesus' name, we remember you. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's eat together. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Would you hold your cup up to the Lord with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this cup that represents the blood of Jesus, that washes our sins and makes us white as snow. As we drink together, Lord, we do so acknowledging the sacrifice Jesus paid. We do so, Lord, recognizing the cost that was made on our behalf. And so as we drink it together, we just thank you. We thank you for our forgiveness. We thank you for our righteousness. We thank you for our right standing with you. So Lord, we just want to bless you as we drink this cup together. Let's drink. Amen. Hey, welcome everybody to Saturday night. Uh, no, 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 no. It's just church. <laughs> Sorry about that. But hey, God has something great for you tonight. This is going to be fantastic. In fact, I think that you're going to, you need to get your pens and papers and get ready to take notes because the word of God today is going to be powerful in you. But before we go any farther, I want to pray for you. I want to reach right through the screen. I want to pray for you. Lord, I pray that the spirit of the living God would just saturate. If they're in their car, saturate their car. If they're in their house, saturate their house. Wherever they're at, Lord, touch them and just move in their hearts. Let us have spiritual ears to hear and eyes to see what you want us to hear and see. And may we walk away from this short time together feeling that, Lord, you've got greatness for me. In Jesus' name, amen. You know what? Everybody forgets. I mean, even if you've got a photographic memory, they forget something. And then you know who doesn't? God. You know, I wrote this about a week ago, and I realized, wait a minute. There is something God forgets. Here's what the Bible says. When you give your heart to him as your personal savior, when you call upon the Lord Jesus Christ to come in and save you and set you free, the Lord takes all the sin you've had in the past, everything you committed, said he takes it and he puts it in the deepest dark side of the universe, in the deepest sea, and he chooses to remember them no more. But see, only God has the ability to choose not to remember. We all kind of forget. You know what? I believe sometimes we think that God hasn't heard our prayers. God hasn't, doesn't care about us, and that's not true. If you're a believer in Christ and you have prayed a faith-filled prayer, and it is the word and the will of God, the Lord has not forgotten you. The message today is that God has not forgotten you. He's still on the throne, and your prayers are before him. I'm reminded of this. For many years, uh, my wife and I have had a real burden for the people of Cuba. And as a church, Crosslands has been there five times. And so we would go in and minister to the people in that communist country that is so riddled with, with evil and horror. But the church of Jesus Christ is rising in that place. And so part of our ministry would be that we would go in and we would bring money with us and we would distribute it to people that the Lord would put upon our hearts. So let me kind of set the scene, and, and, and I'll, I'll try to be very poignant so that you understand that when we go into that country, we spend time in a certain city, and we find a church there that is able to help us with our meals. And so every morning we go eat breakfast at this church, and every evening we go and eat uh, our meal there. And before you think that there's a real big kitchen or anything, there isn't. The dining rooms are usually outside, and they cook on open flames, and the meals are the same every single day. Oh, they might add some little thing there, 
but we're so blessed that they do that for us and the people work so hard and, and some of them save for months because they know we're coming and they save the rice up so they could share it with us. So what we would do is we go as a team and there was 20 of us this last time we went. We went as a team and we would eat our meals in the evening and then I would go in and I just love doing this and see how many cooks there are and there would be usually about, about six or seven or eight of them in there and they were working so hard to make us feel so good. And then I'd, I'd speak to them through an interpreter and let them know that God hasn't forgotten them and God's got something good for them. And then I'd hand all of them a $20 bill. So you think, well, what's so good about 20? $20 in Cuba is two months wages. The average Cuban makes $10 a month. So we give them two months wages. That's a big deal. Think about how much you make. So if you make $4,000 a month, it's like giving you $8,000. So we would do that every night. Now, if they cooked in numerous nights, I just give them 10 every night. And then the new people, is anybody new? I'd give them that 20. And then I'd pray for them. And I'd say, oh, God loves you. And God's got great things for you. Just encouraging them. And boy, they looked forward every night because we were there for seven days. And someone who cooked all seven days got 90 bucks total, nine months wages. All right, let me give you another part of the story. About 50 yards from that outdoor kitchen, there was a church that just had walls and a roof, no windows or anything. And on the other side of the church, they had a bathroom, the only bathroom in the whole place for about 30 or 40 of us. Now, before you start thinking American bathroom, uh-uh-uh, concrete little building, got this concrete hole, and they, they painted it, and they tried to make it as good as they could. And I want to tell you that toilet paper is sometimes just old newspaper. So here we would go to this bathroom, and they had a lady that would sit outside, and after Two or three people would go to the bathroom. She'd stop, and she would clean that toilet, and she'd clean that bathroom. And every time you went in there, it was spick and span. She did this day after day after day after day, seven straight days, cleaning up the toilets after all of us, seven straight days. And on the seventh day, somebody from our team came to me and asked this question. Has anybody blessed the lady that gives, that cleans the toilets? And I got to tell you, I confess this sin. I never thought one time about blessing her. But praise the Lord, God spoke to that person in our group. And I said, no. And she said, I'm going to go bless her right now. She gave her more money than all those cooks. And, and what is most important is I'm sure everybody in that little town knew that somebody was being blessed every night. You think they kept it quiet? the blessings, and I'm sure that lady cleaning the toilets night after night after night just had thoughts in her head that God doesn't care about me. He just cares about the cooks. He just cares about the people that are cleaning up, but I'm going to be faithful and do my job. And I know this. I know how much money she was given, and it was more than everybody else. And I'm sure she went home that night and told her husband, because she was married, God is on the throne. You see, God doesn't forget. We think he forgets. Sometimes you're sitting here cleaning toilets, and, and I'm using this as a figure of speech. You're just cleaning day in and day out, and, no, and you're praying day in, day out, and no answers come, and nobody seems to care, and you think God has forgotten, but God has not forgotten. God doesn't forget. You know what another thing is that moms, they know their own baby's screams. I don't know about you guys. I can be in Target or something like that, and I hear some kids screaming down the aisle. It sounds like every other kid screaming down the aisle. But let the mama hear that scream of that baby, which is theirs, and they're boom, right there. I think it like this. If maybe you could be in a soccer game with 100,000 people in the audience, in the stand, screaming and hollering. Did you know that your Heavenly Father knows exactly where you're at? And if you're in the middle of that soccer game with 100,000 people and you just close your eyes or you just keep them open, but you just think to yourself, God, I need you. God hears you. As a mother hears her child, God hears you. Let's go through a few scriptures. First of all, in Psalms 8, 3, and 4, it says, When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them? Human beings that you even care for them. That's a good question. God cares for you. We're talking about God's benefits. And one of the benefits is that he knows you and he cares for you. There's a story in Kings 
about a young lady, a woman, and we don't know her name, but we call her the Shunammite woman because that was the town she was from. And uh, she always took care of Elisha, the man of God. Whenever he's in town, she was kind of like that lady that was cleaning the toilets for us in Cuba. She cared. And she would just put up the man of God and cook for the man of God and his and Gehazi, his associate pastor, and, and he would just cook for, she would just take care of him. And one day, Elisha said to Gehazi, she's been so good, what can we do for her? And, and Elijah, Elisha said, what can we do for her? And Gehazi said, she has no son, and her husband is old. Then Elisha said, call her. This story's great. So he called her, and she stood in the doorway, and he said, young man, woman, this time next year, you will hold a son in your arms. You talk about a freak out. She didn't think that God even cared. See, in those days, if you didn't have a son, not a child, a son, you were a little lower than everybody else. But he said, God's going to bless you with a son. And she said, don't fool with me like this. And he said, no, this is God's word. See, that's the way God is. There's another scripture I'd like to share with you. It says, as the father pitieth his children, so the Lord has mercy on those that fear him. Anybody who calls upon the name of the Lord is saved. But we've been talking through this series that anyone who calls Jesus is a child of the living God. You see, she said, no, don't do this to me. But the woman became pregnant anyway. And the next year, at the same time, she gave birth to a son, just as the man of God, Elisha, had said so. Well, let's get into it and just quickly walk through the process about how God hears us. And the first thing we want to know is, we, we want to talk about is that you matter to God. He wants to bless you even if you're not asking for it. Think about that Shunammite woman. She didn't ask for a son. I, maybe in her prayers she did, but she didn't ask the man of God for a son. She didn't, she didn't just cry out and say, oh, I need a son, I need a son. They asked her earlier if she needed anything, and she said, I need nothing. My city's fine. I'm doing well. But God saw in her deep inner spirit and gave her a son anyway. God sees in your inner spirit. He says, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. That's in uh, Hebrews 13, 5. Never will I leave you nor forsake you. God sees you. He sees down in your spirit. Maybe you got that prayer like the Shunammite woman. There's, there's something in there, and you've been praying, and you said, God hasn't seen. God sees. God knows. You see, he has made a provision for us, especially during troubled times. When the world caves in around you, God is a place of refuge for you. And without a doubt, the world is caving in around us in many ways. I mean, it, it, this is the craziest thing. We can have such highs. Look what happened. And such lows. Oh, no. All in the same day. I mean, I don't know about you. We're as a church on pins and needles, and I don't, I don't live on pins and needles, but as far as a church, every week, the governor might speak, you know, every couple of weeks or once in a while he speaks week in, week out. Are we going to be able to have church this week or are we not? He comes in a little while back. Oh, we can increase it now. We get to increase our church from 50 to 125. Yes! And then three, four, five weeks later, all of a sudden, oh, COVID's getting worse. You got to go down to 50. No! And that's how I feel, man. I'm just so high for three days. We're getting a momentum and then boom, you got the same thing. We're all in the same way. You might have liked who got elected president, and you might have hated. And then all of a sudden, something happens, and then you like it, and you hate it. You got to admit that the world is caving in. But God is still the same. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And his provision, number three, always involves restoration. We're never forsaken and never left alone. But the act of waiting, and here's where the rub comes in, and here's where the difficulty for you and I comes in. The act of waiting sometimes takes time. Some, sometimes in our life takes more time than we would like. That's what I'm trying to say. And I wrote down about nine things, and, and I, I just thought this off the top of my head. So a woman finds out she's pregnant. It takes nine months. You got to wait. And man, that eighth month, every woman that's ever had a baby knows this. That eighth month sucks. You're bigger than a house. Come on, you know it. 
and you're thinking, when is this baby coming out? And you can't wait to have the baby and you've done the nursery and you're trying to get new things. And then maybe you get the nursery all done and you got three weeks left. Now what I'm gonna do, it takes nine months. Finally, the baby comes. Oh, and it's so sweet, three or four or five weeks. It's so sweet, the baby's so sweet. And then you start thinking, hmm, I wonder when this baby's gonna walk. Well, it takes about a year before the baby walks. So first you had to wait for the nine months, then you have to wait for the year for the baby to walk. And finally the baby starts walking and oh, oh everything's new. And, and then the baby's walked and the baby, and you have another baby maybe, and then the baby starts getting into it. And you know what you start thinking? When is this baby gonna go to school? And you gotta wait five years for the baby to go to school and finally you get him in school, hallelujah. And then he or she starts growing up and they start thinking, well, how much, how long do I have to be in elementary school? When can I get into junior high? When can I get into high school? And then they wanna get a driver's license. It takes 16 years from the time you're born before you can get a driver's license. You had to wait that long. Now, any parent like myself, I have two kids, eight grandkids. I love my kids to death. And if they're watching this, I know they are. I love you to death. But as a parent, pretty soon they get to be 18, 19, 20, and you start thinking, how long before they get out? And it takes between 18 and 26 years from the time they're born before you can get them out. You had to wait that long. Maybe they want to become a doctor. Well, it takes 10 years to get a doctorate degree. Get out of high school, then you got to go to college four years, then you got to go to four years here, then you got to do your internship, you got to do that, and then you got to do residency. And it takes 10 years or 12 years if you want to specialize. You were all waiting. And then for all of us, that have grandkids, you waited for 30 years to get grandkids, 30 years. You went through all the walking, blah, 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 blah. And you finally get them, yes. And then all of a sudden you have grandkids and you start thinking, I'd like to do something a little bit different with these kids. And I've worked and worked and worked. And you had to wait 65 years before you can get to retirement. And I know we don't retire at 65 hardly anymore. And I'm 66. I don't plan on retiring soon. But we had to wait 65 years before we could start even thinking about social security and getting to retire us in America. And then after that, we think, okay, the fun can finally begin. We've waited our whole life to get to this one spot. And we, then when we can have time for fun, we start thinking, and I don't, this is number 10, which I didn't put down, but it just hit me. We start thinking, oh Lord, how much time do I have left to have fun? And then that goes backwards. You see, everything takes time. I hate to say it. Sometimes even our prayers take time. Because God knows exactly the perfect time. He knows when you need what you need at the time you need it. You see, God's plan has benefits. When you give your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ, you can go boldly before the throne of grace. God accepts you. We know this, that there's no waiting period in the Lord for you to receive his benefits. We know that he holds nothing against you in your past. We already said that. We also know as of last week's message that the kingdom of heaven is within you, that you have the authority of almighty God in you, that you are a child of the living God to as many as received him. John 1 says to those who believed in his name, he gave rights to become children of the living God. And all this takes time. But the victory is that God never forgets. So I ask you a final question. Are you in a famine? And I, I don't mean food famine. A famine could be anything. I mean a famine of relationship, a famine of finance, a famine of not hearing from the Lord like you'd like. I mean, you could go on and on. Maybe you feel unappreciated. If I ask that, do you feel unappreciated? Do you feel like you're the lady cleaning the toilets? Well, everybody out there is getting the blessing. I know it. I know there's people out there watching right now. You feel it. Everybody's blessed but me. They got a raise. I got my job cut in half. Their kids are doing good. My kids' school closed down. Hey, sometimes you feel like you're in a famine. Sometimes you feel unappreciated. But here's the word today from the Holy Spirit. You matter to God. And God never forgets. He never sleeps. He never slumbers. And he's watching over you both night and day. If you're watching today and you can't answer this question the right way, and the question is, if you die tonight, do you know if you're going to go to heaven or hell? If you can't say, I know I'm going to heaven, I want to give you the opportunity to invite the everlasting loving God to come into your life. 
and it's so simple. I'm going to say in just a second, if you'd like to give your heart to God, just blink like this. And when I say that, you can blink. And then after that, I'm going to say a prayer. I'm going to say it, and I know that you can say it after me. Maybe you're watching it with somebody. We also want to let you know that if you're watching with somebody and you feel you don't, you don't want to embarrass them or embarrass yourself or it's not the right place or in a public place listening to this, just say it in your own mind. God knows. God hears. So if you'd like to give your heart to the Lord today, right now, give me a blank. God saw that. And so now, repeat after me, please. Dear Lord Jesus, I confess I'm a sinner. I ask you to come into my heart and forgive me for my sin. I believe you died for me. I believe you rose again. And with your help, from this day forward, I will live for you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you did that today, I would like you to just click on the screen right now as something coming up that says, I gave my heart to Jesus. And if you would just shoot us your email so we can just bless you and, and connect with you and we want to pray with you and, and uh, get you connected to our, our community because it's a great community. So please do that for us now. What we want to do is I want to thank you for being great givers. This week, we did our giving here at the church. We've been giving full weeks meals to families. Now watch this. Here's how it went. The first week we gave 267. The second week we gave 275. The third week, I mean the third time, it's every other week, we did 305. And today we did 445 families that we were able to give full on meals to. And that is a blessing of God. See, our job as believers is to be blessed by the Lord, to just uh, be great givers, not so much to where we can't enjoy our lives ourselves, but we need to plug in. God calls it a tithe. And because you are such faithful givers and faithful tithers, we're able to bless all those folks today with our partners from the food bank. Our teams were out there distributing it. And we're so grateful. And if you're not a giver yet and you, and you would like to give to this ministry, which is a fabulous ministry and worthy of your investment, on the screen right now, you're going to see a text to give 484321. That's your text. And once you register, it is so simple. I text to give most of the time myself. It's easy as they come. You can also go to your, our website, crosswindsnv.org. We have the God journey on there if you want to start your journey with the Lord. Well, enough of this. I hope you've had a great, great moment with God right now. Remember, he hasn't forgot you. So let's say it like we mean it, that I am blessed. I have divine favor. I'm not alone. I'm a child of God. I am more than a conqueror. I put my trust in the Lord. I walk in the promises of God's holy word because God has a miracle for me. God bless you all.